Hi guys and welcome back to LPJ Models. In this video I'm going to be building the 1 700th scale HMS Harvester by IBG Models. One of the first things I noticed when opening the box was how small this model actually was. And as you can see there isn't much in the box, but what is in the box is of a really nice quality. The parts are nicely moulded with some impressive fine details. There was no visible flash on this kit, but some of the mould alignment was slightly off, meaning cleanup would be slightly trickier. The kit also comes with two runners of photo etch. The small runner contains the guards for the top of the funnels, whilst the larger runner contains things like the railings, anti-aircraft guns, boat hangers, and other small items. The kit also comes with a small, nicely printed decal sheet. This covers some flags and some marking numbers. The instruction book is nicely printed over eight pages. It's concise and easy to follow. Helpfully, IBG include a rigging diagram for this ship. That looks like fun. On the back page is a full colour profile with colour callouts for Hitaka, AK and Life Colour. I decided to add some turned brass barrels from Master Barrels for the guns. These are absolutely tiny, but the detail on them is fantastic, even down to the end being hollow. OK, let's get on with the build. The parts were removed from the sprues with my god hand sprue cutters. The first step mapped out on the instructions was to build the gun turrets. This meant I had to dive in with some surgery straight away to add the gun barrels. I started by removing the length of the plastic barrel from the gun assembly. To make the process a bit easier, I used a fresh 10A scalpel blade. Any remaining excess was then sanded away with a hard, 2000 grit Infini model sanding stick. Guide holes for the barrels were then drilled out with a 0.3mm drill bit in my pin vise. I then dipped the breech ends of the gun barrels into some VMS super glue and pushed these carefully into place. The rest of the turret assembly was glued together with VMS fast setting styrene cement. Next up, I tackled some of the photo etch anti-aircraft guns. These looked quite tricky, but the folding process was actually quite simple, and all I needed was some patience and a steady hand. All of the photo etch parts were glued in place with VMS Flexi 5K for photo etch. This gave me a reasonable working time before the parts were set in place. My trusty old fine point tweezers were an essential tool for this build. As I don't have a photo etch bending tool, these came in really handy. This cage was supposed to attach to a plastic part. Unfortunately, I snapped mine, so I used some 0.5 wire instead. To make for easier painting, a lot of the parts were built up into sub-assemblies. 
like the bridge, the gun platforms, and so on. To make some curves on the guardrails, I rolled them with a cocktail stick on a piece of cardboard. I had to be extra careful not to damage any of my previous photo etch work when assembling some of the sub-assemblies. I was quite surprised that I dealt with most of the photo etch quite well. It was a lot smaller than I've used before. With all the sub-assemblies complete, it was time for my favourite part the painting. The entire model was given a base coat of MRP Fine Surface Primer in black. This was sprayed through my 0.2 Harder and Steamback Infinity at 15 psi. To add some more visual interest to the hull, I sprayed a thick band of Mr. Surfacer 1000. This was thinned with Mr. Leveling Thinner. I built this up fairly thickly to give it a raised panel effect. After the tape was peeled, this was reprimed to blend it back into the finish. I picked up some life color acrylics for the main camouflage, but unfortunately, I couldn't get them to spray quite as finely as I would have liked, so I decided to use MRP. I mixed up an off-white with a mix of MRP white and clear dope linen version 1. This mixture was about 80% white to 20% clear dope linen, and this was black based over the whole model. As well as doing my usual mottling whilst black basing, I also added some vertical streaks along the side of the hull. For the Western Approach's blue colour, I used a mix of MRP White plus True Blue. This was built up really lightly so as not to leave any raised lines when I removed the masking.
Next up, I mix the Western Approaches Green out of MRP White with a touch of blue and Insignia Yellow. I was really pleased with how the splinter camouflage turned out. I'd expected at least some paint bleed, but luckily I didn't get any. For the Semtex areas of the hull, I used a mix of MRP white, black and olive green to get a dirty green grey. Using the life colour Western Approaches Green mixed with some dark grey, I painted the rest of the camouflage by hand. This was built up in several light coats. The remaining decking details were also painted with a brush. The box art showed a checkerboard pattern on one of the funnels. As this wasn't supplied with a decal, I decided to mask it. I used some extra fine masking tape before filling the pattern in with MRP black. When the tape was removed, I was pretty pleased with the result. Next up, it was time to apply the decals to the hull. The surface was prepared straight over the MRP with VMS Decal Set and Fix. After the decals had been positioned, they were left to dry and then given a layer of VMS Decal Softener. When building this ship, I found working in sub-assemblies much easier, so a lot of the sub-assemblies were detail painted before being glued to the hull. This also made it less likely that I'd knock any parts off whilst painting. Once these sub-assemblies had been painted, it was time to glue them onto the hull. I used a mix of super glue and plastic glue and left the bridge assembly off for further detailing. It was nice to see all of these assemblies come together and start to bring the ship to life. As I had already painted the deck, I had to glue on all of the depth charges with super glue. I found it really difficult to glue these depth charge racks into place. So to get around this, I pressed them into place and then thinned down some Revel Contactor Clear with water and ran this around the details. If the glue dries thin enough, I'll be able to hide it under a layer of matte varnish.
With all the details, apart from the bridge and forward gun platform in place, I gave the model a layer of VMS Matte Varnish HD. Next up, I'm going to add some light weathering to the model. This needs to be subtle, otherwise it'll look out of scale and unrealistic. I mixed up a light wash of Abtiling 502 Sepia with VMS Universal Weathering Carrier. This was then pin washed around all the details on the model's surface. I also added some very tiny rust streaking to the side of the hull. The rusty oil was dotted into place underneath portholes and along the side of the hull. After a few moments, this was blended in with a fine brush and universal weathering carrier. I tried to make these as fine as I could, otherwise they'd look too big and look overscale. The reason I left the bridge assembly off till now is it was easier to rig the main mast before gluing it onto the deck. For the rigging, I used Infini Model Super Fine Rigging Elastic. A tiny dab of VMS Extra Thin Super Glue was put into place with an airbrush needle or toothpick. I then cut a strand of rigging elastic to size and anchored this in the first dab of glue. When this had dried, I added another dab of glue at the opposite connecting point and stretched the rigging wire over until it was taut. Once it had dried, any excess was removed with a scalpel. Once the mast had been rigged, the bridge assembly was glued into place. Once firmly in place, I could continue with the ship's rigging. Although it looks tedious, it wasn't too tricky. All you had to do was take your time and rig from the inside out. The railings were given a layer of VMS Metal Prep 4K before painting. This really promotes paint adhesion and means I'll have to do less touch-ups after handling them. Once the handrails had been painted, they were carefully glued into place. The more complex curves were bent as I glued them. I'd glue a section, bend a section and then glue that and continue until I was happy with the result. To attach the ship's boats, I glued on some elastic cord and then hung these in place with some super glue. The final details to add to the ship were the flags. The decals were slid off their backing paper, folded in half, and then glued into place with superglue. I 
I didn't think the ship would look right just sitting on its own, so I decided to add it to a sea base. Using some rough watercolour paper, I marked out the position of the ship. This was then cut carefully to size. The watercolour paper was then coated on both sides with VMS Structuring Acrylic Binder. This will stiffen the watercolour paper and stop it from swelling from subsequent paint layers. The watercolour paper was then glued onto my wooden block with PVA glue. This was taped into place until it was dry. I didn't find the watercolour paper to have a pronounced enough texture, so I added some more with Artist Gloss Gel from Windsor & Newton. This was stippled and brushed into wave shapes and left to dry. Because the effect was hard to see, I primed it with MRP Black Primer just to double check I was happy with the shape. For the first layer of colour on the sea, I used a mix of MRP Black, True Blue and Insignia Yellow. This was mottled randomly over the whole piece, allowing some black to show through. I then added some highlights with a mix of MRP True Blue and Insignia Yellow. This was concentrated over the raised areas of the water surface. To add some more variation, it was also lightly mottled over the rest. To finalise the sea, I sprayed over a thin layer of Tamiya Clear Blue thinned with Mr Leveling Thinners. Some more acrylic gloss gel was then stippled over to gloss it up completely. I attached the ship to the base with PVA glue. When this had dried, I blended the ship into the base and filled all the gaps with some more acrylic gloss gel. This took several layers, but worked quite well. To make a sea foam effect, I mixed some gloss gel with some Vallejo white. This was thinned with water and then brushed into the areas that I wanted foam. Whilst this was still wet, it was stippled with a soft brush to blend it in. This also helped to give the foam a nice realistic bubbly texture. Before we finish up, I want to give a huge shout out and a massive thanks to my patrons. Your support helps keep the channel running, thank you very much. And thanks to these awesome folks, the next project has been decided, so keep your eyes out in the next few weeks. If you're interested in becoming a patron, with benefits like access to build logs, high quality photos and polls, then head over to patreon.com forward slash lpjmodels or click the card in the corner. For the last step of my 1700 scale HMS Harvester by IBG, I peeled off the masking tape from the base and the build was complete.
So, how did I get on? Leave a comment below and let me know how I did. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm James from LPJ Models. Thanks for watching.